How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now, a while back I took a look at the DK63 wireless $45 mechanical RGB keyboard up from a diarrhea. Still don't honestly how to pronounce the name correctly, but yeah. And it was probably the basic budget keyboard that you could buy. Unfortunately, I don't think they're selling it anymore, but yeah, it was really good for the price point and everything you got. However, as you guys can imagine, at $45, I even bought it at $35, it wasn't necessarily the best keyboard. The build quality was a bit lacking, the RGB was okay, but also limited, and then also I had some problems with the Bluetooth connection. But that was a while back, and now we have the new version, the DK61 and also the DK61 Pro. Now currently this is the wired version, as you guys can see, unfortunately it's not the wireless version that I could compare directly to the DK63, but the build quality and everything is exactly the same. The Pro just has a Bluetooth 5.01, everything else is exactly the same. Now currently the DK61 is retailing unfortunately a bit more than the DK63 when I bought it at $50 for the wired version and the Pro is going for $60. So it is a bit more, but honestly the upgrades that they added does make it a nice upgrade. Then taking a look at what you get inside the box, you do get a 1.6 meter braided L-shaped USB Type-C cable, a single brown and red removable switch, the switch puller, the keyboard itself, the keycap puller, and then finally the manual, which is just going to be handy if you want to know all of the shortcuts on this keyboard, because as you guys can see, this is a 60% or 61 key layout keyboard, which is honestly much smaller than the standard keyboards. And it does make it nice for traveling and so on. Also, if you just wanted a bit more of a compact keyboard on your desk, if it's not that big, then this is a really nice addition to go with. But also because of that, unfortunately, you are going to need to use a lot of the secondary functions on the keyboard, all of your F keys at the top, your arrow keys, and then of course for all of the lighting and so on. Also at the bottom, you do not get any flip out keyboard feet, just the standard of four rubber pads that does a decent job, but you're not able to actually lower the elevation of this keyboard, which you did get with the previous model, which is unfortunate. Now, compared to the previous model, the upgrades that they added to the DK1 is honestly a, a nice addition. It makes you feel a lot more premium. With the previous one, you did have still plastic everything, but the plastic did feel a bit cheap. You had rattling going on, and then also the keycaps did have this more rubberized, textured feeling, which I wasn't too happy about, but it wasn't bad necessarily. However, with the new version, it does feel a lot more premium. The shell is still plastic ABS, it's not PBT, but it does feel a lot better. They got rid of that rattling. It's not that bad, honestly, it's just more of the switches. And then also for the keycaps, they got rid of that rubberized textured feeling and instead went with the standard textured PBT plastic keycaps that we get on a lot of other keyboards, which just feels a lot better in my opinion. Honestly, it is a very nice upgrade that they added to the keyboard and especially if you are gonna go for the wireless version, I just think that is going to be a really great keyboard. Now, also, they did mention that it is water and dust resistant, it's IPX4, and I wouldn't really test that, I'm not going to dose my keyboard in a water, but yeah, if you do accidentally spill some water on it, it should be okay. Don't quote me on this, but it should. So yeah, I'm not gonna test it, however. Then as for the switches, this is another upgrade that they added compared to the previous version. This one used Otomu switches, whereas the new version uses a Gateron optical switches, which uses a optical infrared laser instead of having just the normal mechanical actuation that you get. Now you do have a few different switches to choose from. Currently I have the brown version over here, but you do have it in a black, a blue and browns as well. 
Now, in all honesty, it is quite difficult to distinguish the difference between the new optical switch compared to the standard mechanical switch. I couldn't really feel a difference. Now, there is a difference because the linear switch, the radio version, gets rid of the metal leaf that does add some friction if you do use it. But for the standard clicky key uh, switches like the browns, the blacks, and the blues, I couldn't really feel a difference. On paper, it is better because it does have a much, much faster reset time where you don't need to allow the switch to completely lift up compared to the previous or the standard mechanical switches. Whereas the laser light is really fast, so it resets a lot, a lot quicker. And if you're into just speed, then yeah, that's going to be better. And then we'll see. I'm not really complaining. It is better than the standard mechanical keyboards, than standard switches. So it's just a win-win. Also, if you wanted to, you can actually remove the entire switch and again, replace them with the included two single switches, which I'm honestly not sure why they included that. But yeah, you can remove them, but I believe you will need to replace them with other Gatron optical switches. You can't switch between all of the different brands. I believe it has to be the exact same ones because the PBC, the board isn't going to support the other one. So yeah, don't quote me on that, but I do believe that's how it works. Now, another nice upgrade that they added is towards the RGB. Compared to the previous model, now you get a white backplate that does allow the RGB to shine a lot more and makes it look a lot more vibrant, as you guys can see, with the RGB shining between the keys compared to the previous one, which was just the normal black backplate, which looked a lot more boring. So. The RGB is a lot better in my opinion. Now, along with the effects, you do have the option of adjusting the speed of the effect. You can slow it down or speed it up, depending on what you want. That's again on the keyboard itself. And then also you can adjust the brightness to make it a lot lower, or you can even just turn it off completely. Then also you do have the option of three different profiles that you can select on the keyboard itself. Each one you can go set and assign different commands to and adjust all of the controls, the RGB and everything if you want to, but we'll get into that in the software. But when downloading the software from a key moves website, you do have so many more options. Firstly, for the controls, you can assign different commands to each of the keys. You actually have a lot of options that you can add, not only a single key, but you can also control alt and then assign a key. So you do have a multi options that you can add. Not only that, you can add numlock commands, you can add multimedia commands, your mouse commands, all of that on the keyboard. Also, if you wanted to, you can assign and create your own dedicated macros. So if you have something that you specifically want to command to, you can also create that and assign it to one of the keys. But as for the RGB again, here you have so many more options, not just that nine preset that was programmed on the keyboard. You have a lot of options that you can choose between. You can even go download third party ones and link that up if you don't want to create your own ones, which you can do. It does have a bit of a learning curve to it, but once you have set it up, it is really nice and you can just create your own one to fit your setup. So then in conclusion, the DK61 from Darian Keymove is a definitely a nice keyboard at that $50 price range. And all of the upgrades that they added compared to the DK63 is really nice. However, I would say if you are looking to go for the DK61, just go straight towards the wireless version. The reason I'm saying that isn't because the DK61 is a bad, it is because the DK61 doesn't really have anything that distinguishes it above the market currently. There's a lot of other 60% keyboards that's also not too expensive and yeah, it's something that makes it stand out. However, if you go for the wireless version, there's honestly not that many wireless RGB mechanical keyboards currently. So 
yeah, that's just going to be a really a nice a keyboard if you are going to go for that. It is a bit more expensive at $60 uh, compared to the $35 that I got this one for or was retailing for $45 before this video. But yeah, it's just a going to be a better buy if you go for the wireless version, even if you're not primarily going to use it in wired mode. The option of being able to connect up to three wireless devices at the same time and also run it in wired mode is honestly a nice addition. So that's just my two cents. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. A big thanks to Key Move and Diary for sending the keyboard over for a view. If you guys like this review, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. I will leave links all of the, uh, I will leave all of the links in the video description, and then I will check all of you guys next time. Cheers, guys.